नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि अंबत्वासंदा भगवदगीते भगवत्षिणी ओ भगवत गीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटनमेंट टू अर्जुन विच वॉज इंक्लूडेड इन द महाभारत बाय द एंशंट सेज व्यासा ओ शॉवर ऑफ द नेक्टर लाइक नॉलेज ऑफ नॉन डिजम ओ गॉडेस कंटेंट इन द एटीन चैप्टर्स ओ माई अफेक्शनेट मदर द डिस्ट्रॉयर ऑफ रीबर्थ I meditate upon thee. Now, Krishna Vandana, Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansa Chanura Mardanam Devakim Paramanandam Krishna Vande Jagat Guru. O son of Vasudeva, the slayer of Kansa and Chanura, extreme delight for Mother Devaki, O Lord Krishna, the supreme teacher of the universe, my salutations to you. so today we will take up the 61st shloka of uh, read the 61st shloka of the sankhya yoga the second chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita sri krishna is uh, uh, telling talking about the the senses that how they they can just you know bring havoc in the life of an aspirant by tempting them to get indulged in the enjoyment of sense objects and uh, in this 61st shloka now sri krishna is going to tell something something very important something very crucial for a spiritual aspirant how how to subdue the senses they are having their sway no doubt but sri krishna says that there is a way out and that way तानि सर्वाणि संयम्य युक्त आसित मत्पर वशे ही यस्येन्द्रियाणि तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता नाउ अगेन श्री कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अस अबाउट द द प्रज्ञा द पर्सन हुज प्रज्ञा इज प्रतिष्ठित हुज विजडम हैज बीन स्टडीड हु द पर्सन विथ द स्टडी विजडम द स्थित प्रज्ञा द स्थित थी who makes himself eligible to enjoy the ecstasy to get to to get into that position of samadhistha that uh, uh, arjuna has asked shri krishna what are the what what, what is the definition how do you describe such a person who is a sthita pratnya the one with the steady wisdom who is samadhistha one who gets into ecstasy one who enjoys ecstasy being of the steady wisdom and one who is sthitahi that one who is firmly established in the self mastery in the self knowledge in the brahma gyan now shri krishna says tani sarvani sayamya tani is them sarvani all sayamya having restrained having restrained them all युक्त आसित मत परहा युक्त इज जॉइंड आसित शुड सिट मत परहा इंटेंट ऑन मी कृष्णा इज टेलिंग वन शुड सिट रिस्ट्रेनिंग ऑल हिज सेंसेस फोकसिंग ऑन मी मत परहा फोकस्ड ऑन मी intent on me vashehi yasya indriyani vashe is under control he verily indeed indeed having controlled yasya indriyani one whose senses tasya pratnya pratishthita that man that person is known as one with the steady wisdom 
such a beautiful uh, formula Sri Krishna has given that the yogi, the one who is intent on realizing the self, the one who is intent on achieving self-mastery, having controlled his senses, sits focused on me as the supreme goal. His wisdom is constant, his wisdom is steady, whose senses are under subjugation, whose senses are totally under his control, not he under the control of his senses. So Sri Krishna says, and how to do it? Just sit, meditating on me, focus on me, have all your thoughts concentrated on me and the senses will never trouble you. The senses will never have their sway. Just surrender yourself to me. Now, <clears throat> mind cannot occupy itself at the same time with two conflicting thoughts. That is the problem with our, with our mind. We, we cannot, our mind cannot function properly when there are two conflicting thoughts there in the mind. One thought is, go and enjoy the senses, sense objects. Another thought, don't enjoy the sense objects. Beware of them. Be cautious of them. Now when these kind of two conflicting thoughts are there in the mind, it, it happens with us not only on such kind of uh, spiritual thoughts, even, even, even in our day-to-day -day life, when we experience whether I should do this or not. When that kind of conflicting thoughts come up, we become indecisive. And then what to do? Then we focus our mind on one particular aspect. Then we start weighing pros and cons. And then we arrive at a solution whether to do it or not. In the auto-suggestion, I shall efface sense pleasures. The idea of those pleasures is still involved. Hmm? When, when, when uh, uh, we, we, we are auto-suggesting, I am not going to enjoy those. But even in that auto-suggestion that I am not going to enjoy, I am I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rubbing off the thought of enjoying those sense objects. But while thinking in this way, the thought of enjoyment is still there. It gets deep-rooted in the mind, this thought of enjoying the sense objects. It gets deep-rooted in the mind. In a favorable future situation, this hidden idea sprouts and puts forth branches. And that's why Sri Krishna has cautioned us in the previous shloka that even the wise men, even the wise men, they can be lured by these senses and result in the downfall. By nipping the tender branches on the surface, the stalk and the roots below are not destroyed. When you keep on you know, pruning the uh, branches uh, on the top, you are not uh, controlling the growth of the roots below. You are just pruning those branches. On the other hand, steam gathers strength below. If those buds, you are nipping them on top, what happens is the stem below gains strength because whatever uh, nutrition is going to be consumed by those new branches. Now those new branches are cut. So those nutrients, they become available for the stem below and stem becomes stronger and stronger. On the other hand, the stem gathers strength below. The unwanted idea thrives in the subconscious region of the mind. It is negatively fostered. And then what happens? By repeating, I am not going to enjoy, I am not going to enjoy, I am not going to enjoy. Somewhere that sense of enjoyment, it gets in our subconscious and there it makes its root. And there, by nipping the buds of the new branches, we are unfortunately 
we are strengthening those unfulfilled desires which have lied hidden in our subconscious. The process has therefore to be reversed by substituting a positive idea that I shall delight in the glory of the Lord. Simply saying I am not going to enjoy, I am not going to enjoy, that is not going to work. Because you are not, you are, you, you are not uprooting the basic desire to enjoy the sense objects from its totality. From its core, you are, we, we are not uprooting. We are just closing our eyes thinking nobody is seeing us. But if at all we are that sincere, not only should we say that yes, I am not going to enjoy the senses, rather I am going to put my mind at the lotus feet of the Lord. I am going to surrender at the lotus feet of my mother, of my beloved mother, who is my whole and soul, who is my all in all. When we do that, then that the hidden thought in the subconscious automatically starts getting wiped out because our focus is not now on not enjoying. Our focus is on the Lord. Our focus is on the mother. When this wholesome idea gains in strength, the other gets purged away. Healthy ideas wipe out the unhealthy ones. As devotion to the Lord increases, the wild vehemence of the mind gets tamed down. So simply it is no good saying, I am not going to do this, I am not going to enjoy this, I am not, not, not going to eat sweets, I am not going to drink this, I am not going to do that. No. Rather, I won't do that. But I am offering myself at the lotus feet of the Lord. I am going to constantly think about the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord who is sitting in my heart. The mother who is sitting in my heart. I am going to think about her. Then those hidden desires for enjoyment will automatically get uprooted from this entire system. Now, now, <clears throat> what uh, Sri Ramakrishna uh, talks about uh, this particular concept, his teaching, Sri Ramakrishna's teaching. No thought of any sense in indulgence crops up in the mind while one is bitterly bereaved of a dearly loved relative. Similarly, no vulgar thought drops up in the mind of the one devoted to the divine. Now Sri Ramakrishna says there are two instances where our indulgence towards sense objects doesn't uh, you know, uh, uh, surface. Our desire to enjoy the sense object doesn't surface. One is when we are bereaved, when there is a, a death, death of a close relative in the family. That is the time when we, we actually at that that point of time, we cannot even think of enjoying anything. That is the one. And second is a spiritually minded person. No vulgar thoughts crop up in the mind of one who is devoted to the divine. Now that, uh, uh, you know, uh, not thinking of enjoying sense objects in the period of bereavement is just a temporary phenomenon. Over a period of time, you Come out of that bereavement and again your senses have their sway. But a person who is dedicated, who has dedicated himself at the feet of the divine, who has uh, surrendered oneself at the feet of the Lord, at the feet of the mother, for such no vulgar thought crops up. The turbulent senses in him become subdued soon. So that is the ultimate uh, uh, you know, uh, solution Sri Ramakrishna has given, like Sri Krishna has given, sit there, focus, focus your mind on me and then these senses, they won't create any havoc. In the same way, Sri Ramakrishna tells us that just surrender yourself to the divine and then those senses, they won't have their sway. You will be ever free. You will be free from the danger of the sense objects affecting you. Then you will attend the position of the tortoise withdrawing its limbs after pursuing the danger in the external world. 
that is our reading of uh, the 62nd uh, uh, shloka or 61st shloka of uh, the sankhya yoga om namo bhagavate vasudevaya shri krishna arpanamastu jai shri ram krishna jai thakur jai ma jai sukha